leadership isn't just about making big decisions or hurting a bunch of adults who are sometimes acting like kids. It's about keeping your sanity while juggling a million things, just like a circus performer, but without the spandex. So imagine you're leading a team and every day feels like running a marathon in quicksand. What do you need? You need resilience, emotional intelligence, and stress management. So enter Mental Fitness, your secret weapon to not just survive, but absolutely crush it. A solid practice can also help you prepare for the unexpected, like a phone call at bedtime on a Wednesday that sees you flying out at bedtime on a Friday to do due diligence and strategic analysis on the ground for a new project for four days in Italy. If nothing else, the scenery this month should be a bit out of the ordinary. So today is about mental fitness for the budding entrepreneur, the next super leader, the person at the top, and the entire corporation. So get inspired to turn your ordinary into something remarkable. Hey-ho, let's go. All right, picture this, a boot camp that doesn't just make you sweat, but makes your brain do cartwheels. We're talking productivity hacks that make your eight-hour workday feel like a power hour. Have you checked out the Extension Bootcamp? They got more done in five hours than they usually do in a whole day. No phones, no social media, just work. And exercise, and meditation, and a weird Aussie in board shorts showing them some self-defense moves. Imagine leading a team that's this productive. It's like turning a bunch of couch potatoes into Olympians. Leadership boot camps are the new training ground for mental warriors. And if you can't handle it, well, maybe leadership isn't your thing. But if you can, you're on the way to becoming a corporate superhero. Even better, you can keep your soul by being out of the box and outperforming everyone around you. So mindfulness matters, but this isn't about sitting cross-legged and humming om. It's about building resilience and emotional intelligence. Mindfulness and breathwork does nail it in the corporation too. Try this. If you've got a day of back-to-back meetings, take two minutes between each one and do some box breathing. Being centered and refreshed may just save the day. It's about being sensitive and a prize fighter all in one hit, the Rocky Balboa of the business world. Knocked down, you bounce back up with a grin. The extension boot camp wasn't just about getting stuff done, it was about showing leadership potential from those who took the plunge to challenge themselves in front of their peers. And I coached a participant in the boot camp one-on-one for a few weeks and they moved from late night gamer to a fitter, more confident and promoted young person a few weeks later. And the pleasure was all mine. Just for the record, this is filmed in a chapel in a private castle um, somewhere built somewhere around 1850 and just about all of it is original. Awesome. So why would you go for a boot camp instead of a seminar? Don't get me wrong, seminars can be cool, books can be great, but they don't change your life. What does change your life is when you take action, because until then, it's just noise. Learning stuff, getting inspired, doesn't change the world. Doing something does. So if you want to make it stick, you have to do it for long enough to upgrade your habits. And that's the pathway to the better new you, where your ordinary becomes remarkable. Have you ever tried convincing a team to ditch their phones? It's like asking them to chop off a limb. But guess what? Phones are productivity vampires. The science shows they are destructively distracting. But imagine leading a meeting when no one is sneakily scrolling through Instagram. Shocking, right? But here's the kicker. They might actually pay attention. Controversial, but true. And I did it once with the dev team. And I promised them that if they left their phones out of sight, there was a promise of not working weekends, ever. And they gave it a crack apart from one guy who didn't, and his lack of productivity became abundantly clear. And these guys went to nail one of the biggest projects I've managed in my career. Through the pandemic, with a 40% budget cut, 3,000 days of effort, and 100% uptime. I set the framework, but they made it work. Different cultures have unique approaches to all things mental health. In the US, everyone's got a therapist, a coach, and maybe even a psychic. Aussies and Kiwis are still getting their heads around it, but once they're on board, they're like mental fitness evangelists, but just don't tell them what to do. But in India, they're getting there, but they often just want to be told what to do. And in Saudi Arabia, let's just say vulnerability isn't exactly celebrated, but once they add that to their arsenal, it changes their world. And everyone does it a little differently. And mixing these practices is like a potluck dinner. In a multicultural workplace, each culture brings its own dish and suddenly you've got a feast. I'm group coaching a crew right now with four different distinct cultures. And when the proud First Nations lady can share a joke with the Arab, you know you're onto something. 
Emotional intelligence is part of what keeps you from losing it when someone sends a reply all email that should have been private. High EQ leaders handle office drama like pros and keep the vibe positive. I mean, how can you lead if you really don't get people? And it's not that leaders don't have the emotions, bad days and the skid marks. They just know that in spite of this obvious discomfort, the job still needs doing and they still need their people. Resilience, that's your ability to get back up eight times after being knocked down seven. But if you want to step it up further, enter anti-fragile or hardiness. And that's when you improve from the punches. Now, I'm not saying let Apollo Creed nail you with an uppercut, but it's that we mostly get damaged when we try new things. But that's when we learn the most. So keep stepping out on those limbs. They might break occasionally, but over time, you'll learn to land like a superhero. So why bother with a coach or a quality mind mentor? Coaching isn't therapy. It's like having a personal trainer for your brain. And while therapy might dig into your past, coaching is all about moving forward. It's about optimizing your men's performance, like tuning a high performance engine. And we coach for generative moments, that magical shift when everything clicks and suddenly the world is full of possibilities. And a good coach helps you to see what you might have missed and pushes you to step out of your comfort zone. And this is the best part of my job, the moment someone works it out for themselves and owns it. And in coaching, do we answer your questions? Not really, but we will show you how to question your answers and develop your very own self-sufficiency to thrive in the chaos. A lot of people resist mental fitness coaching because they think it's all a bit woo-woo. But here's the shocker, the stats and the science show that it works. And overall, the ROI on coaching and professional life is between 1.8 and 3. It's a great investment. Work with and develop what you've got because good people like you are hard to find. But are you working somewhere that isn't wanting to invest in its staff? Yeah, the individual you has to do the work, but it works and the stats don't lie. Eat better, move more, exercise, empathy, and boost the energy. How can't that be great for you, your career, and the company? If the boss disagrees, send them my way. It's not about thinking happy thoughts. It's about training your brain like a muscle. So drop the skepticism, grow up hair, and take on the challenge head on. Do the work because it works, and that's why we guarantee results. Mental fitness is evolving, blending traditional practices with modern innovations. And digital mental health tools are transforming how we approach mental fitness. Now, don't get me wrong. Like Robin Sharma said, change gets messy. But that's cool. We set a plan, we have a crack, and then we check on the progress. And if we learn something, is there a better way? Then damn straight, that is the direction to pivot to. And in modern workplaces, it's a multicultural adventure in personal development. Try a bit of Swedish Lagom one day, American positive thinking the next. It's all about finding what works for you. So experiment, learn, and enjoy the journey. Keep walking and finish strong. It's time to stop living half a life. Get your ass into gear, be the person you want to be, and get ready to get sweaty. Hard work is seldom pretty, but you can find satisfaction from the mental grazes and bruises as you toughen up to the realities of life and smile at them. Upgrade your ordinary. It's time to thrive. From boot camps to coaching, they can transform your leadership and your life. Most of all, thanks for joining me. Now go out there and crush it.